Yeah, all of all of you able to hear us and all of you able to yeah. see my screen. Yeah, hi. Okay. Yes, yes. Good it's good. Very good morning, all of you. Appreciating your effort in the morning itself. Uh, no, you guys are uh, showing your interest to learn new technology. Uh, that's fine. So let me give you a quick brief about myself. Uh, and Okay, so we'll get it started, by the way. So myself, Hari, I'll be the batch owner for this Ashwar and DevOps course. So yes, uh, this week, right, uh, we are going to learn about uh, these five topics only. Okay, day one, two, three, four, five. So these are the topics only we're going to learn. So personally, right, I have a close to 12 years of career experience. Okay, so I'm basically a multi-cloud architect. I started my career with the AWS. Yeah, still my contribution almost six. 50% goes to AWS, so remaining, you know, 40% we are working on Azure, GCP also available in our environment, uh, and also DevOps as well, okay, uh, plus Kubernetes, I am good in Python scripting, so these are my area of expert, so basically I am out of Chennai, and uh, yeah, so you guys, you know, feel free to interrupt me when you have any doubt, you know, so that we can make the session very much interactive, by that way, right, it will be more useful to everyone, okay? So as much as possible, uh, ask your uh, doubts, okay? And uh, we can have a discussion regarding that. Um, uh, so let's get started with that, okay? So so before that, I wanted to understand from you people, how many of you, you know, uh, new to Azure here, how many of you already having some knowledge on Azure? That by based on that, I will you know decide how depth we need to go into the basics. I have just learning knowledge, but not hands on. Oh, okay. Just got uh, yeah yeah got some access to AWS in my AWS team. or Azure. 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 Oh, okay. Just learning experience, not much. Okay. Azure and Hello. AWS uh, recently. Okay, that's great. Uh, all right. What about others? Yeah, from my side also, I have just an uh, learning experience, not on a hands-on experience. Okay. No, no, you. Very good. Learning experience, no hands-on. Okay. What about others? At this Bala, I have. I'm new to new to Azure. <laughs> okay. Wait. Fine then. Uh, yeah, I am completely new to Azure. Hi, Kari. Okay. Hi, Siva. Perfect. Hi, Yeah. I am also uh, new to Azure. It's hard to hands on experience. Oh. Okay. okay. I okay. have some basic knowledge about Azure. Okay. But and uh, even I don't have any hands on experience. Uh, that's nice. Not a lot of issue. Okay. Uh, some of them chatted also in chat also they shared new to Azure, new to Azure, yeah. And Baragan and the Munis. No problem, guys. No worries. I'll make sure by end of this uh, you know, batch, right? You each and everyone when you can portray minimum two to three years of your career experience. Maybe if you have a five years experience in your overall, ten years experience in overall, right? In that two to three years, I'll help you to modify your profile that you worked in uh, Azure and DevOps. The reason why this course we have planned in such a way with uh, approaching on real time use cases and real time, you know, uh, uh, live project environment, client uh, task, day to day activity, uh, uh, root cause analysis. And that way, right, we have structured. Okay. So, first week, it's completely going to be on, you know, we are going to touch upon basics and the essential concept uh, before understanding. Because if you understand these topics only, you will be able to understand the real project use cases, whatever I'm going to show. Okay, so that way only we have you know uh, planned and decided this course. Okay, so let's get started uh, with the introduction to Azure. Uh, so you all know, right? So if you go there, uh, every cloud provider they have their own uh, you know uh, console graphical user interface. In that only all these uh, you know uh, activity hands on we will do. Similarly, this is the console and this is the login page for Azure. In this console only, in this Azure portal console only, we will be able to access and interact and the provision any resources, manage our infrastructure, everything. We would be able to do it on top of this console only. Okay. So everyone, it's uh, important to have this console. Even if you go to production, we will interact everything through this console only. Okay. This is, we will call it as Azure management console or Azure portal, whatever. 
portal data should not come. That is the URL to interact with this, uh, you know, uh, interface. This is the interface where we will communicate with Azure. Okay. Addition to that, uh, we will have to understand uh, the particular, you know, uh, Azure, how it differs from other cloud provider. We have a very good competitors available for Microsoft Azure. Amazon Web Service is one of the biggest competitors, Google Cloud. Okay. What other cloud providers are there? You people are aware? Other than AWS, GCP, Azure, any other cloud providers you guys have heard about? Alibaba and uh, IBM. Very Oracle. good. Alibaba, Oracle. IBM. Oracle, yeah, nice. Oracle. That's nice. Uh, okay, anything else? Even right or wrong, no problem. Feel free to answer Newton, it. Newtonix, it's a private cloud. Okay, private cloud. Uh, lots of private clouds are there. That's fine. Anyone heard about Salesforce? Digital Ocean? Yeah, yeah there are many uh, cloud providers are there, but uh, these three cloud providers are peak in market. Azure, AWS, GCP. Fine. So when you come to you know, Azure, uh, this particular you know, the cloud environment, uh, earlier, if you go right, any, any particular uh, uh organization they will have their own data centers initially okay every organization they had a, their own data centers what does mean by data center anyone know what will be there in the data center servers digital servers very good racks physical servers every okay. networks okay storage Box. Okay, there is a term called S4N. Anyone heard about S4N? No. First one is server. Second one is storage. Another one is software. Another one is security. Okay. Okay. Four S stands for when you take a data center, you will have a server. Of course, yes. You will have a rack server, you have a blade server. You will have a uh, standalone server. There are various types of servers are there. End of day, what is server? Uh, if we go to you know on very good hotel, there will be a server. It will be serving food for us. Correct? So who will be the important person for the hotel? Clients are important or servers are important? Obviously, clients are important. The number of clients they are visiting to their hotel, obviously, the hotel growth will be getting increased. So Similarly, here also, why we are calling it as a server, whenever people are, you know, any globally in the world, uh, people are trying to access your application. It could be your web application, it could be your customized application. The server, uh, which is in a position to serve whoever, you know, requesting for the web page to load, application to load, right? The server will be distributing the content. That is what server, right? The server can be, you know, a huge hardware. Uh, we, all of you holding our own laptop. So what is our laptop configuration? Now we'll have i3, i5 or i7, 4 GB RAM, 8 GB RAM, 16 GB RAM, uh, hard disk, 1 TB hard disk, 5 uh, GB hard disk. Like, you'll be owning your own hardware configuration for your laptop, right? Since server is servicing for multiple clients, so it would require a higher, uh, you know, powerful hardware is needed. In your laptop, if you have one processor, in data center, one server, you'll have a four processor. Makes sense. Here you handled with the... Uh, 16 GB of RAM over there, you will handle with 16 GB into four. Okay. So here you handle with one TB of uh, storage over there. You will handle with uh, hundred TB of storage. So that's how it differs because it has to store lots of data. Okay. End of day, that is server. When come to storage, if you go any data center, you will have a dedicated storage device will be there where people will be configured ride and all. Okay. Anyone heard about ride? These yes. both are very long, you know, recently people not using these terms. And then heard about right? Yes, sir. early, early, the array of early, early, yes. yeah, correct. Yeah. Early days we used to configure for our high availability, all those stuff. Softwares, you know, right? If you take any, if you have any database uh, application or Windows server, of course you need to install the software. The license also matters. Uh, imagine you are installing MySQL database license matter. Microsoft related servers licenses matter. So. <laughs> Any any kind of software should be there in the data center. Security, of course, you'll have a, uh, it can be software-based security, it can be hardware-based security, but ensure there should be a security. Last, the N stands for, we, we got to know S4, 
Okay, four S stands for what? Mean by N? Network. Very good. Network. Okay, you will be dealing with us. Your network switches, router, firewalls, load balancers, all those things will be there in uh, play, right? So you will be interacting with you know for internally communication, you will require a network switch for uh, you know uh, one network to another network communication. We would require a network router. For uh, protecting our environment, we would need a security device, something called firewall. So all those things must be there in the data center. Correct? Agree? Anything else will be there apart from this S4N? Uh, one mandatory thing should be there. Anyone know? Anyone entered inside of data center in your career at least one time? Any any data center? Spa space oh. space or, yeah, or physical location? <coughs> data center, I'm telling you. Physical data center. Any organization? Physical? Yeah, physical location. Yeah, physical data center. Have you ever visited yes. any one of the data center? Oh. Yeah, we yes. are going for uh, data magic. Uh, yeah, data awesome. How, how it should be like it will be like this only right yeah this kind of uh Some full, full rack actually it is yeah it is like a rental based uh, data center so multiple organization uh, servers was located in the data center shared space you mean the shared space. Space. exactly okay somehow similar to those images only what you are seeing correct here people will be aligned all our servers in the racks network switches all the wiring connections everything will be there correct Yes, yes, yes. That's great. So one one thing what we missed is air conditioner. Okay, the environment should be always very cool and chill. How many of you know? No, uh, when in yes, correct. Air Actually, air the AC was coming from the top and <laughs> as well as the below. Exactly. We could not able to stand there. Yeah. And also, so there is no mobile phones allowed. Yeah. Whenever we have a doubt, we need to come outside and call the superior and need to call himself. Yeah, while well, you enter inside, you need to put your thumb, finger, or some some authentication should be there to get inside. And it's not uh, not everyone correct. authorized to go inside, correct? Correct, correct, correct. Perfect, perfect. That's and they will give one that blue dress, that <laughs> corona dress, and then shoe. Uh, perfect. Yeah, so that's how it should be data center. So uh, I would say Azure. When you take Azure Cloud, okay. Uh, uh, someone asked me what is what is Azure, what is Azure Cloud. If you go and normally you ask to the you no know, non-cloud person, if if people you know totally new to cloud is not even know anything in cloud, if you simply ask right, what will be his first answer would be like uh, cloud means it's online storage. How many of you heard this answer from people? If someone, if you go and ask, what is cloud? First time they'll say, the cloud means it's online storage. Anyone, anyone hear this answer from people? Uh, yes, I have heard. They Most think commonly, it's only storage. Yes, exactly. Most commonly people would answer like this, but this is not the case actually. Say, I'll tell you what is Azure Cloud, you'll never forget in your lifetime. Okay, mark my word. So Azure Cloud is nothing but, it's simply a virtual, Data center, I'll mention data center, DC, okay. Virtual data center present online. Using internet, you would access set up your organization infra. Okay. What is meant by Azure Cloud? Virtual data center present online. Whatever you are seeing here, right? These all completely a physical component. You can go and touch and feel. Okay. Uh, who's that actually? Uh, sorry, brother. Your name mentioned like VV. What is your full name? So that I can call your name. Vadivel. Vadivel. Okay. Yeah. If you can see Vadivel when he visited into the data center, uh, he felt he felt the like uh, the air conditioner, the cooling part. And he can touch and feel the each and every servers, networking devices, switches, router, everything. He can see and he can touch and feel everything. He can configure something. But when you come to Azure Cloud, this is a virtualized data center, okay, which present online. You cannot touch and feel it. You can imagine only. Okay, you can imagine only. If you have an internet, you can interact with Azure. You can set up your uh, infrastructure for your organization. 
same thing whatever if you take an organization they would have a server storage what what you said that's a that's a shared data center there were multiple organizations are sharing the resources they are keeping one data center that's how he said so even azure cloud also in the similar way but not in physical form okay what what is the reason why we are going to the azure cloud what is the reason we are going to azure cloud there are some disadvantages with uh, you know uh, on prem physical data center that is the reason we are going to cloud that is the reason we are going to azure kind of cloud provider what are the disadvantages anyone can tell any any disadvantage what could what it would be occupy space space location okay. cost cost okay what else cost very good cost means what you trying even azure you will pay right in in which factor you are telling cost but again azure is not free right Right. Buying a multiple servers for multiple applications. Buy complete okay. hardware that there you can use it your usage. So uh, uh, in future, if you want to upgrade, also it mm. it will cost more. In Azure, uh, there is no much cost for upgrade. Very good. The agree. Services. Very good. Agree. Kumar Priyan, agree with you. Okay. What could be the another reason we are moving out of maintenance? Maintenance. Data security. Data security. Uh, you are telling data center is not secured one. Cloud is secured one. <laughs> uh, no, much more. Okay. All right. I'll I'll consider. Okay. Security. Since you are provider, your valuable input. Maintenance. Okay. What could be? What other could be reason possibilities? Hey, availability. That's right. Yeah, perfect. Good answer. Any any other reasons? Me. Multiple cable connections that are confusing. Okay. 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 Almost uh, you covered everything. Okay. So coming to that advantage, uh, disadvantage part of a uh, data center, right? Of course, the first one is always would be cost. Okay. Let me organize in the place where we are come from. Okay. So first reason would be you are uh, costing. First thing, cost in the sense investment is the biggest challenge in terms of data center. Imagine uh, you are going, you know, uh, into any organization. They have their own data centers. Okay. So they have their own data center. In that case, right? Uh, in in our personally, we all of you owning our own laptop, right? Just tell me, like, I wanted to buy one laptop, okay, which is the configuration of i5 processor, uh, oh, somewhere around eight GB RAM, uh, one TB hard disk. Uh, the laptop, normal laptop, Dell, Lenovo, HP laptop. How much it would cost? Normal laptop. Roughly, tell me, how much? Around about? fifty to sixty thousand. 50k to 60k we are telling right yeah. so one normal you know personal using laptop itself costing 50 to 60k which has one cpu one ram you know one hard disk then imagine the cost for this server storage you know networking devices switch router firewall and all how much it would cost the first time you are going for setting up your data center the investment of buying all those components will be really huge guys it would cross you around, you know, uh, 25 lakhs to 50 lakhs. All of you agree? Investment is the biggest challenge when you come to data center. The startup company, if, if today, you know, uh, Anbaragan want to, he is thinking, he has good enough of, you know, IT experience, he's starting a new company. Okay. So you would need a data center. Obviously, you will have an internal application. You will have an internal, uh, you know, software. And uh, you will have its own website. Yeah, he said, planning to set up on, uh, you know, he's a startup. He's planning to set up on data center. Will he be able to send initially, you know, 20 lakhs, 25 lakhs, something like that, only for the data center? Not possible, right? That is what yeah, we are thinking okay. in data center, a cloud investment is biggest challenge for us. Okay, someone and you know, arrange the money. Uh, he, he, he uh, you know, he arranged some money, he set up the data center. After, you no, know, how much warranty they'll give? One year they'll give warranty for your server storage networking devices. Within that, any fault comes, a uh, vendor will uh, replace your, you know, in warranty, you can replace it. Imagine after two years, after three years, your uh, CPU goes failure, your memory goes failure, or hard disk corrupted. Okay. Uh, in that case and all, what you will do? 
again you need to put your own money you need to replace that particular component you all of you agree this is comes under the maintenance this is comes under the maintenance not only you know replacing the component always you need to keep one you know data center uh, hardware engineer in your place one network engineer in your place he will make sure the uh, uh, daily routine uh, you know ground level uh, clean up things and all uh, with the data center he will make sure always available all the service are absent available proactively take some actions if there is an issue any issue occur he is the one who gonna replace all those things troubleshooting so for that at least we need one data center three shifts okay three shift we need to allocate minimum three engineers okay that also comes under maintenance only that also we are going to spend additionally apart from investment make sense this is going to be another biggest challenge third one is high availability of course yes you can plan for an high availability but imagine uh, high availability is an active active concept active passive concept server have you guys are heard about active active server setup active passive cluster setup no need to go deep dive but just have you heard this term active 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 passive those concepts yes uh, through application side uh, i heard about active active and active passive uh, related to sandy and sandy not sure about uh, no problem. Know. No problem. I'll I'll give you an example along with the application. You have a two server. Imagine in your data center, you deploy the same application in both server. Active active means when people are accessing your application, both server will respond back to your customer. Okay, whoever available at the point of time, he'll respond back to your customer. So both these servers are active at the moment. Active passive means whatever request comes. Okay, so first server always will respond to your uh, client request. The packet first uh, server always will respond back. If anything happened to the first server, the passive server will become online. That point of time onwards, so, so we will not face any glitches here. We will not face any uh, packet drop. So if something happened to your first server, it's when it goes down, second server will become active. That is something called active passive concept. So here, unnecessarily, we are holding one server for long because getting server down is not a frequent uh, task. It will run one year for successfully. It can run five years successfully. It can run 10 years also successfully. No problem in that. But uh, uh, till that time, right, the second server, we are simply spend a huge money on that server. We are keeping it simply idle. Okay, that is another uh, you know, drawback when come to data center. Uh, so high availability, if you plan, plan means you need to put a double number of your, you know, for single service, you are spending two hardware costs. Okay, that way, uh, high availability possible in data center, but very much expensive in terms of implementing. Okay, if you're going for, you know, ride concept and all, as I said, in the storage level, high availability. Obviously, if you go for enabling mirroring, okay, how mirroring works, anyone know? Storage, ride, mirroring, how it works? Uh, mirroring is nothing but it's a copy of original one. So exactly. whatever you are doing memory, it's copied in mirror. Copied exactly. Code. Perfect. So you will have a one hard disk. Whatever data we are writing in the hard disk, same thing will be mirrored copy in the second hard disk will be there. When we will use second copy, if something happened to your primary hard disk, we will recover our data from second uh, hard disk. Imagine the primary hard disk is not goes down for, you know, almost uh, five years it's running without any issue. What is the case of my backup uh, hard disk? It's five years. It's completely simply kept idle. One TB hard idle. Disk kept it idle. Correct? Yes. So implementing high availability in data center, it's possible. 100% technically it's possible. But you need to spend double the number of money in terms of, you know, buying a hardware. Okay. That is where we are telling uh, disadvantage of, you know, casting and uh, those things all, you know, ideally we are keeping the resources. Those things all considered as a disadvantage when come to data center. Of course, space, uh, you need to have a dedicated space. You need to allocate proper cooling system in that place. Power supply, you need to provide. Okay, you need to have a generator always uh, because if power goes down, it has to give, you know, artificial power we need to provide for the data center. We cannot get let it uh, wait until the power comes back, right? Is that a case in the data center? We'll have to have the power backup, all those things. Okay, security, uh, yeah, uh, we need to have a proper, uh, you know, uh, biometric access to get in. Now we need to make sure always uh, unauthorized person supposed to not go there. And connectivity biggest challenge and installation of anything. Okay, uh, from one network to another network, uh, it will take long time to establish. Actually, 
okay so all many dependencies are there that is the reason we are going with the cloud providers that is the reason we are going with the cloud providers when you come to azure right we don't need to spend any hardware of buying we don't need to uh, spend okay once again guys Sorry, guys. So, yeah, as I said, uh, this particular, you know, high availability, uh, it's easy uh, for implementing in Azure Cloud. And okay, coming to this, we don't want need to provide any investment because uh, we are renting the resources. All of you paying a power bill, right, in our home. If you utilized 100 units of current, how much you will pay per month? We use 100 not units. Checking. Sorry? Not checking that, just paying whatever comes. <laughs> if you use 100 mm -hmm. units, that's free. <laughs> In Tamil Nadu, I'm not sure about other states. So, yeah, no cost. Have, yeah, first 100 units, no cost. In Tamil Nadu. Anyway, but anyway, you are, you are, we are not checking it, but we are paying based on which we are paying. So, for example, if 2000 rupees, you are getting a current bill, electricity bill. Obviously, you would have consumed for 200 units or 300 units, something. So, end of day, you are getting a bill. How much units you consumed? You all of you agree with the term? We are paying an electricity bill. How much we consumed there, uh, you know, units of power? Similarly, cloud also, how much you are consuming the Azure resources, you're going to pay for that. Alone. Okay, it's, it's similar like our electricity. Hmm? So, that is one of the biggest advantages. So, imagine... Sorry guys, can you hear me back? My internet dropped. Yes. Yeah, yeah there is a... Who all are living in Chennai? In this participants? Me. Yeah, yesterday was heavy That's rain. Me. What about yeah, heavy rain yesterday. Yeah, yeah. due to that the power is not there. Just before, uh, you know, my I think my wife is doing some R&D. She, she needs to put Mixi. She's finding for a UPS plug point. She disconnected the <laughs> internet. <laughs> okay okay so i connected from my hotspot now anyway so the thing is when come to you know azure uh, we don't need to buy any uh, dedicated hardware everything we are going to use it as um, what we are we going to use we are going to pay for it any audit comes in our infrastructure today one day if i am configuring one server end of day if it i can turn off i can delete it i can throw away okay that that's why azure is very flexible okay if you go to the console okay if you go to the console each and everything here call it as a services okay whatever the technology i've written here server storage software security network everything here calling it as a one of the server example you wanted to interact with server right simply virtual server okay virtual machines open this in new tab you wanted to interact something in azure uh, in terms of networking means put virtual network virtual network will come okay you wanted to interact anything in terms of storage right you can search like a storage Okay, it will come. You can open it. You wanted to interact something with the database, right? You can search with the database. So, data related services will come. Okay. So, here for each and every, you know, uh, services, you will have a dedicated dashboard. Okay. This is the main uh, Azure homepage. Each and every dedicated one, right? You will have an individual console. Here you can manage all your virtual servers. See, uh, at present, I have a couple of servers. Whatever the subscription you are seeing, this is my production account, even in the, throughout our class. I'll take in this production account only. So this is our don't delete, uh, Prakash, this is our you know, resource, which we are supposed to not delete, where uh, we have some of our uh, you know, applications are running maybe. And this is our network, virtually we configure the network. Okay. And this is a storage. So far, uh, as at present, we are not maintaining any storage. So I just cast, right? We are deleting it upon. Apart from that, uh, you can see the server is stopped currently. I've created the server. One of our main application is located in the server. Okay, we will turn on the server somewhere around after uh, 11 o'clock, 11 a.m. It will run till uh, 7 p.m. Okay, so we are going to pay money only for those particular duration. 7, sir, 11 to 7 p.m. only we will pay. If you stop the server, right, we are no need to pay. During the even if you stop it this for one month, you will not be paying any money for that. Makes sense that kind of you know flexibilities are there with uh, Azure Cloud. 
చేస్తాను ఓకే మెయింటైన్ అండ్ అఫ్ కోర్స్ ఎనీ అవుటేజ్ బ్యాక్ ఎండ్ పవర్ సప్లై డౌన్ ఎనీ హార్డ్ వర్క్ డౌన్ వాట్ ఎవర్ సింప్లీ గో టు సపోర్ట్ ఓకే సింప్లీ గో టు సపోర్ట్ క్రియేట్ ఆన్ సపోర్ట్ రిక్వెస్ట్ ఓకే క్రియేట్ అ సపోర్ట్ రిక్వెస్ట్ సేయింగ్ దిస్ ఇస్ డౌన్ ఐఎమ్ నాట్ ఏబుల్ టు యాక్సెస్ ఓకే అషూర్ విల్ టేక్ కేర్ ఫీల్ ఫ్రీ ఓకే కమ్ అవుట్ దేల్ ఫిక్స్ యాజ్ ఇమీడియట్లీ యాజ్ పాసిబుల్ హై అవైలబిలిటీ వెరీ వెరీ ఈజీ హియర్ by default ashar you know uh, combined with there is something called multiple regions and availability zones actually okay anyone heard about regions and availability zone concept in ashar yes what is that exactly azure data centers are available in the particular uh, place region yeah if you can see azure has lots of regions actually if you go there here you can exactly see azure has regions means uh, close to you know uh, comparing other cloud providers azure has higher uh, regions uh, he has you know its presence for an example i am going to create on virtual machine i am going to create on virtual machine see look at that the location east to us currently the server is created under if suppose if i click on new server if i go to the region look at this these many countries azure has their presence these many country azure has their presence you know africa asia pacific australia central east asia japan korea southeast asia canada france like uh, many locations these are, these are the local uh, centers yeah, centers yeah. right uh, many locations correct these many location azure has their presence in fact uh, we are living in india we don't have any issue keeping a server in different country uh, you know when uh, when cloud uh, came to the market right everyone started using cloud uh, i don't know any 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 people supporting uk project uk based project any of you not in cloud generally your client is located from uk anyone i think nobody here any any us us uh, based company you are supporting near day to day work yes okay us mostly uk there is one uh, you know uh, thing is there when you are uh, you know your company is located in uk when your uh, people are accessing your applications or uh, you know you are you are providing service to your uk within uk uh, you know location your company origin is uk you are registered in uk your company uh that particular uh, data center and resources right must be there within your country you are not supposed to keep your uh, resources in other countries some of the us projects right uh, which is running some of the server the cost of management of all the servers and data center in us very much expensive they'll charge us in hourly basis but in india right almost not even the uh, half amount uh, not even half amount uh, they'll bear in uh, india if they keep their servers so the, the, that kind of things will be there in india data center but uh, when you come to uk right european countries and all they have to they mandate as per their standard they will have to keep things inside of within their country so that is the reason right uh, azure is the opt on okay if you are you know located in any location you would able to provision your resources in that particular uh, country okay as per their government standard also so uh, even when we have in south india in india they have a data i mean data center location i mean regions in uh, mumbai uh, hyderabad even in chennai we have okay so that kind of way <clears throat> if you go to each region right example if you take mumbai this is a region this is uh, you know uh, frankfurt uh, from europe this is you know north america south america something like that so each region if you go they'll have a dead availability zones az1 az2 az3 so which means if imagine uh, in chennai example i'm telling it's not a accurate one just for our understanding only because most of them from uh, so north uh, chennai location right imagine if you are the region available in chennai first availability zone will be there in you know uh, imagine it, it is available in saidapet so next availability zone somewhere around 200 100 to 200 uh, kilometers far away because if 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 something happened to this availability zone any disaster occur any disaster occur 
so we will be able to you know provision or we'll have another uh, availability zone available in the same region actually the availability zones are your data centers we were talking about data centers right okay we were talking about data center when you maintain data center you will have only option to have your data hardly in one data center maximum you are a very big company you can have a data center in two locations or three locations you cannot go more than that but when you come to assure you have a op open option to keep your data in these many locations okay to here you can have your primary location in australia you can have your uh, disaster recovery backup uh, location that that uh, technology and technical things also possible because of the hierarchy something called regions and availability zone regions and availability zone so we have a region you will have a various availability zone oh, between the availability zone minimum you know, 100 to 300 kilometers away because if something happened to your availability zone within the region itself you have another availability zone to provide you the data back okay this is the concept of regions and availability zone uh, comparing other cloud providers uh, aws or gcp other cloud uh, azure has more regions and more availability zone this is one of the another advantage today people are considering azure where they provide lots, lots of you know locations this is one of the benefit out of which okay these many locations azure has their presence so obviously there is no doubt about high availability okay you don't maintain any data center so forget about the space you don't need to have even any data center security of course uh, we will not even know where the you know um, azure data center present in chennai uh, we have azure data center anyone know which location it is Anyone know which no. location Azure has their data center in Chennai? So whatever, you know, this is totally, you know, uh, confidential, but uh, one of my friends said, uh, uh, anyone heard about Saida Pet? Yeah, yes. Right away, Saida yes. Pet, there will be one, uh, uh, they were signal will come. Mm -hmm. If you go still straight, you know, uh, Oh, yeah, because two words writing go away, all were paid side. Very sun building will be there. And right. Over there, 12th floor, Azure has their data center. I don't know, like whatever the resource we are provisioning, it will be there. But for backup, for some reason, Azure has data center over there. That's what I heard from one of my you know contacts. But just for the information, okay. So similarly, we not even know where the data center locates. Okay, uh, it will be you know uh, unconfirmed only because that that much secure their infrastructure, all those connectivity everything. So we don't even worry about our connectivity all this part. Let's see everything Azure will take care. That is the reason, right? We are coming up with uh, Azure Cloud. Okay, whatever we are setting in on prem, we are going to virtually configure by using internet, right? Virtually, we are going to configure everything on the Azure console. Okay. So this is what, you know, very much important uh, people have to understand before getting into cloud guys. Uh, uh, I have one doubt. Uh, I'm not sure whether this is the correct time or not. Since you came up with the uh, high availability. While installing the server, we need to choose the region, right? Yeah. Which region and which zone we need to choose. Yes, correct. Okay. In, in this situation, if uh, one of the data center got failed means, uh, so how the server will be, whether uh, automatically it will move to other region or uh, we need to create it a backup server in other region. Oh, uh, yeah. For answering okay. this, uh, we have a two, three answers I can give. First one, in Azure itself, there is a service called, you know, uh, DR, uh, Disaster Recovery for one service available called it as recovery service mm -hmm. fault. Uh, if you want to automatically switch over to another region, you need to enable that service. You need to configure the DR service enabled in your Azure account. In that case, if primary server is down in uh, your disaster region, any other region you configure, right? It'll be, it'll be you know, uh, start running from that your DR region. That is one way. Okay. Second option, okay. right? Within the region itself, somehow that is expensive. Uh, if you, are, you, are, you have that much income, obviously you can go for it. No doubt in that. You are a beginner. You are a startup company. You are not able to afford that much amount uh, for an Azure. What you can do in the same server itself, you have something called fault domain and update domain in Azure. Okay, mm -hmm. which is there in okay. your, uh, what do you call it? Uh, which is there in your uh, Azure environment itself. Okay. In the same region or okay. zone itself. Fault domain, update domain means uh, when you have your Azure region, right? You will have one server down. 
okay so fall domain mean one particular rack any entire rack is down one power supply down means in another rack we can you know start run our server that way we can high availability we can have a control we can configure it that way also you okay. can achieve your high availability okay that and all we'll see when we are dedicatedly you know learning about virtual mission i think i will open the which day we will learn i'll show you sure. uh day 4 we will going to talk about more on no virtual mission okay okay fine fine thank you okay cool very good question uh, hope you got the theoretical answer practically you would be able to uh, get the answer by day 4 okay. huh? sure okay. so can you tell me some examples for what all we need to pay while we work in azure uh paying means billing services billing. billing yes yes for what all even for small most small commonly we need to pay so uh, what are can you give some examples sure of course when you take a normal project you cannot run any project without your servers so first point virtual machine you need to pay okay so coming to the networking and connectivity right for we are calling it as a virtual network in azure we are not going to pay anything for basic connectivity okay if you are transmitting something to other country means one region to another region your data transmit is happening or you are have a your on prem cloud data on prem data center you are connected with azure right so that data transfer you will be paying for it but the general configuring of your network switches router you will not pay until and unless you are transmitting your data to other regions okay third one you need to pay for your storage okay obviously when you have any project we'll have a storage yeah, in azure we are calling it as azure storage account the storage account itself we have a multiple options are there like uh, you know we would have a containers we would have a you know file share queues table so based upon what type of storage you are using how much data you stored in that you will be paying for it okay this is the most common as of today right uh, if you comes to advanced uh, environment at all people are using kubernetes based uh, clusters they are deploying their application not in virtual machine they are deploying in kubernetes that kind of services if you use you need to pay for it okay so these are the most commonly and frequently as of today people are paying for it uh, other than that if you works in devops environment uh, whatever the pipeline you configured ci cd pipeline in azure repo how much code you have it in the place and how much you are using you know azure boards for creating your tickets and apart from that um, Uh, what other azure functions you have for automating your environment okay for all those stuff uh, you will have to pay how much you are using whatever the services are listed right this is the most common uh, thing we will be seeing in the billing cycle of every month okay if you go cost uh, no management i just increased uh, my c drive from 80 gb to 100 gb mm. there it gave me an alert to go through the payment or something so yeah you can even configure even the cost small... alert here any type of alert uh, under the cost management there's a service under that you can configure the alert uh, in any case okay uh, okay if you come to cost analysis here the place where we will check most commonly how much we are paying for the services what are the services free in azure Uh, Azure has you know plenty of services by the way. Okay, if you click on this, you will come to know. Oh my God! He's no, no, asking no. free services. Free services. Yeah, free services. I missed the term. So when you have a free tier account, when you create a free tier account, probably tomorrow we'll be creating free tier account. They will be giving you you know eight or somewhere around seven thousand to eight thousand uh, rupees per month. before you know uh, you can you know uh, enjoy uh, all this money it will be totally free uh, until that money gets over it will be free uh, but a, li a lifelong if this is mean azure has uh, something called entra id recently they have changed as entra id but uh, earlier it's something called azure active directory that is free service vnet is free service until you use basic apart from that uh, uh, you know a monitoring there is a service available that is something free okay so apart from that um uh these all the basic services only you will get as a free even for a production account rest all you will be paying as much how much you use that uh, service example uh, you know and it's something called uh, vm storage 
data transfer load balancer uh, dns uh, app services automation services pipelines azure devops for all those things you will be paying for free tier account you don't need to worry about okay so i think tomorrow we will set up our own free tier account mm -hmm. Make sense? Any other questions? Ah, but uh, ma ma major services, right? You would be able to get it from here. Uh, we'll explore all those things. Okay, guys. So this is what we have planned today. Welcome and uh, course overview and uh, introduction to Azure and you know uh, overview about uh, cloud computing. And the introduction to Microsoft Azure. Tomorrow, right, I am going to help you to set up Azure uh, free tier account. All of you, uh, you know, uh, will be configuring a free tier account. How many of you already having Azure account? Anyone created already? I had one earlier, then closed it. Okay. What about others? Yeah, so, we have no, created. We are not created. Okay. Not created means fine. Tomorrow, I'll tell you how to create a free tier account. And uh, the, uh, the, okay. the current account, what I have, right? This is a Microsoft Trainer account. MSDN mm -hmm. platform subscription. So this platform subscription, you will not get, by the way. This is a lifelong free for us. But we need to contribute for Azure uh, you know, uh, community. Anyone attended Azure community and all? Which happens in Chennai? Bangalore? No. Oh. In Azure community means uh, there will be many from IT companies, many people will register and come for the session. Usually it will happen as uh, Chennai IIT or you know any you know uh, five-star hotels, conference room, something that they have booked and they'll plan for the sessions actually. In that case, right, uh, we'll have to go and present actually. Whoever presenting over there, uh, we'll get the subscription. For uh, two-way we can use. One is for presenting, uh, because we are spreading uh, uh, Microsoft things to people, right? There are a huge audience will be there. Per session, uh, 200, 300 people will be attending. So apparently five, six tracks will going on. Like that, okay? So that way, uh, we got the subscription. So you guys need to create a free subscription, okay? Okay. So certified uh, Azure trainer will get this. Uh, certified Azure trainer uh, will be, you know, uh, present in the uh, conference. We will get this uh, thing. And uh, tomorrow we are going to talk about Azure subscription resource managers and uh, other services. We are going to explore uh, what common services we will use. Then we will go to DevOps. Then virtual machine. Here I am going to bring our real-time project use cases. People, many of them said, right, I have a basic idea on Azure. I learned Azure, uh, but I do not have hands-on. So when you go for attending interview, hands-on is really important. And the people will ask you questions from real-time project use cases. Okay, so I will share a couple of, you know, sample interviews video in our group. I mean, uh, mock interviews in our group. Just to have a look on it, you will come to know, okay? So make sure, simply learning the concept won't help you. You need to learn real-time use case. Real-time, what is your day-to-day activity? Okay, that is very important. Only then you can portray two to three years of your Azure and DevOps experience in your resume. Okay, that we will learn on the day four. Okay, that's how we go. I think we are good on the day one, right? Yes. Are you comfortable with me? The way I teach? Yes, we are. Yes, okay. yes. Happy to see you all. Most of people are very much interactive. That's really good. So we'll we'll meet tomorrow, eight tomorrow. Okay. So thank you, everyone. Okay. Have a good day. Thank you, Hari. Thank you. Thanks, Hari. Thank you. Thank you, Hari. Thanks, Hari.